Wrath and Grace Radio listeners, I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Kepler Education. Kepler is a consortium of independent teachers offering classes in all subjects for grades 7 through 12 and beyond. Unified by a shared vision for classical education, innovative technology, and the historic Christian faith, Kepler teachers prepare students for a professional and private life well lived and they do it around a schedule and a budget tailored to the needs of your family. And I'm not just excited about Kepler because they are one of our sponsors, but I too am a Kepler teacher within the consortium. So come check us out at Kepler.education. Kepler is not a traditional online school. It is a consortium of independent online educators unified by a common vision to bring a Christian and classical education to junior high and high school students. Okay, what's up, everybody, and welcome to another Wrath and Grace Radio Conversation. I'm your host this week, Luke Walker, and I'm here with a special guest, actually a good friend of mine, Peter Silseth. So uh, Peter uh, had spent uh, many years on the mission field, which he's going to, going to tell us about, and has uh, had a very cool opportunity recently to continue serving missions, but from home. So we'll get into all that, Peter. But maybe you could say hello to our to our listeners, man, and just say a word or two about yourself. Luke, it is always good to see you. <laughs> and I do appreciate your friendship and the fellowship in Christ that we enjoy. And so hi to everybody. Hope you're having as good a day as we are. Mm. And, uh, you know, you and I came into contact because you became pastor of Redeeming Cross Church, which supports our ministry. And I have to say that as we've rolled through all that, it's just been a delightful time uh, enjoying you, your family, the church, and what what God has been doing through both our ministries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been really thankful for it, man. And, well, you're uh, thankful too, because I hook you up with good coffee. <laughs> that's true. That's what we're going to get into. So for you listeners... <laughs> You coffee heads, that's where we're going today. So, hmm. so uh, okay, so you, you mentioned that uh, Redeeming Cross has been a, a mission supporter of, of you and your family. So, right. so maybe, I mean, where, where did you serve on the mission field, brother, and what did you do there? Well, you know, it's interesting. I had a, I've had a 38 year radio broadcasting career. And yeah, always listeners Christian can tell. Video. They hear your voice, they already know. <laughs> They're ready to cut me off the show already. Is it Really? <laughs> so there's there's a, there's a possible coup attempt here. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting. In 1989, our family went to live in Liberia, West Africa, for one year to help with a radio ministry back in the jungle. And it was one of those things where I was scared to death to get into that. I mean, I put every break I could on it. And God said, no, no, I'm going to take that break off and that break is off and you're going. And it was, it was a watershed year for us because it really changed our outlook on so many things and really started propelling us toward the idea of full-term missions. Mm. Now, that came several years later. I returned to the States, we did, and I got back into radio broadcasting for a few years, was challenged in a missions conference to say, God, whatever you want. And, you know, some people go, hey, that's dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerously good because, you know, I, I mean, Jesus tells a story. Uh, you know, you fathers know how to go to do good things for your kids. You know, your, your son comes to you and says, Dad, you know, I need some food. Yeah, here's a stone. Here's a, here's a snake. Here's a, he said, how much more does God do good things for his children? And so, Luke, you know, I sit here today and just look back over our lives and just say, God only does wondrous things. So when the opportunity came to go to the island of Roatan off the coast of Honduras to work with a radio station, God had prepared us for that situation. And so, you know, there was still some fear and trembling because I'm a slow moving guy. You know, I don't want to run ahead of God. Mm. And I think sometimes I've had a tendency to lag behind him just a little bit. But, you know, we went down there and um, I ran that radio station, preached in many of the churches on the island. And um, my wife had Bible studies. I used basketball as an outreach ministry to young guys. And 
it was a wonderful 15 years, wonderfully frustrating, but you know, God used that in so many ways. Ball so, and fools up, ball and fools yeah. up for Christ. Exactly. Exactly. There's been tell tales of brothers who have, uh, haven't had much game, but felt they've been empowered by the Lord playing a pickup game with somebody just for an open door of the gospel. I've, I've had yeah. experience something like that myself, some great empowerment that opened up some relational doors. But, uh, yeah. but you don't need those supernatural empowerments because you, you just have game, don't you, Peter? Now, well, how do you know? You've never seen me play. I can tell. I've seen, <laughs> I can tell. Peter's got game, even the way you talk about it. Well, the game is slipping farther and farther behind me as I get older. Did that but become you know, something? Like, is that just a door that happened to open when you went down there as the guys showed an interest in basketball? Or was that something you had planned and, and brought to them? We, we kind of, I, you know, I kind of looked at what, what sport or sports will God use as a means of outreach? Because I enjoy athletics. And I found a little basketball court, maybe half a mile from our house. So I just went down there and started playing with these guys. And then a court got built between my house and the radio station. So, you know, that was three, four, five days a week out there bouncing with those guys. And, you know, you alluded to it. When you get out and sweat with somebody, no matter what it is, you know, helping shingle a house, framing something, uh, any time you sweat with somebody, the door starts to open to serious conversations. And, and we saw that down there. Mm, so cool. Tell us a little bit about the radio station down there and the, the radio mm. ministry that you did. Yeah, that, um, that radio station started in 1990. We went down in 99. And so it had been on the air for several years, AM and FM, English and Spanish. So it was a bilingual station. We had different times of the day each language went out. It would be very similar to a radio station you'd hear in the United States mm -hmm. in that we had Bible teaching and preaching. We had music. We had a, a call-in program where somebody would call in and say, you know, hey, I, I heard a song this morning. I'd like to hear it again, or I want to send it out to my friend, wishing them what they called down there a pleasant day greeting. And so uh, this station, all the years we were there, it was, there were two stations when I got there and through all the 15 years, it was the most listened to station on the island. In fact, you know, the listeners just referred it to as to the radio station mm -hmm. as if there was only one. Mm -hmm. And what was so fun is the engagement with the listening audience on a personal level. I, I told people I could drive to almost any spot on the island, get out of the car, and within about 10 minutes, I'd find a listener, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of them I knew personally. Hey, Brother Peter, I like that song this morning, you know. Yeah. You know, it, it reminds me of Wrath and Grace Radio. Our listeners, yeah. they just call it the podcast. Why not, right? And, uh, and in fact, if, 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 if you join our Patreon supporters then you become a special kind of listener who gets that personal access to the hosts sort of in a similar way mm -hmm. that, uh, that Peter walked around as the superstar among men. And uh, so if you join the Patreon Fellowship of the Cup, you have special chat access, special conference cool. access, special access to, to the hosts. So I just saw, it, saw it, that was a sort of a parallel, that's all. So yeah. I figured I'd point that out to our listeners. So if I joined up for that, does that mean you'll invite me over to your house for coffee? Yeah, I will. I will. I, I, it will be ready. It will be ready. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the until things. Until then, brother. One of the things that highlighted the power of that radio station down there. Um, I was I was hooping one day with the guys, and these guys are you know they were way younger than I. They were younger than my own children, so they're you know eighteen to twenty eight. And I'd been guarding one guy most of the afternoon, and my teammate goes, no, let me take him. You take Hiram. Okay. No sooner did I get on Hiram when he came in with some kind of move where he pivoted his elbow, 
and put it right here on my nose and he put did. my nose over here. He did do that, huh? Felt like I got hit with a baseball bat. Well, long story, I had to go to the doctor, they put it back, and then I had all of this tape all over my face to hold it. And, you know, we talked about it on the air, you know, what had happened and different things. I said, if you see me around town with tape, here's what happened. Well, we went to another part of the island, stopped at a place of business, got out of the car. I saw two men standing about 20 yards away. I didn't know them. So I just said, hi, guys. And they go, oh, hey, hey, Mr. Peter, how are you? I said, wait a minute. How do you know me? Well, we see all that tape on your face, and we heard about you talking about your broken nose on the radio. Figured it had to be you. (laughs) (laughs) So that was... um, that was yeah. very cool. And yeah. it was hard to leave that. I got to tell yes. you, it was hard to leave. Yes, a very fruitful ministry. What brought you back? So. What brought you back home? Yeah, health issues. Uh, started out in 2013 with atrial fibrillation. Uh, couldn't get that fixed down there. Finally came up to the States, had a, a, an ablation procedure. And, you know, went back down. You know, oh, tank is full. Let's, let's rock this place. I'm ready to go. Luke, I got to tell you, man, within a month, I was feeling similar symptoms again. Mm. I was like, what? Went to see a cardiologist there. He said, it's not your heart, man. Your heart's fine. So then, you know, one thing, and it just kept coming. And my wife's a nurse, and she said, I'm not taking you home in a body bag. You're not staying here. So (laughs) it was with great reluctance. In fact, Luke, I fussed with God. Mm. I told him he didn't know what he was doing. I, I told him, I said, Lord, I, I still have things I want to do at the radio station, expanding that ministry. I said, my basketball boys, only two of them are saved. And Sandy still has Bible studies. I said, God, our ministries aren't done here yet. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't hear voices, Luke, but I really had a sense in my spirit where the Holy Spirit just kind of put an arm around my shoulder and said, um, son, All of that was mine before you came. I think I can handle it if you go. Mm. And so now, you know, our mission president said, okay, what do you want? Stay in the mission. You can do whatever you want to do. I said, I would like to travel with all of our short-term teams to Honduras with my video gear and let me film, edit, and what God is doing. And let's use the power of video to show, to tell that story, and then to get people to get involved. So I get to go back down three, four, five times a year. Uh, I usually pack a little extra time to go back to the island and see my friends. I'm still witnessing to my boys, my boys, you know. And then, you know, we got settled here in Coon Rapids, Minnesota, and after a couple of years, grandkids started coming. And I didn't know how cool those were. <laughs> they are immensely cool. Oh, and I man. just had to stop and say, God, I'm sorry I fussed with you those years ago about leaving because you do know what you're doing. Uh, amen. Praise the <laughs> Lord, brother. So, okay, that leads into uh, really what seems to me to be really an unexpected area of development in your ministry. Oh, yeah. Sort of, oh, yeah. So, so our listeners are familiar, and especially our fellowship with the cup members. Uh, really, if you had to talk about the Christian beverage, you know, the Bible talks a lot about water, but but if when we get beyond just water, the Christian beverage, I think that we all know that it is coffee is the Christian beverage. Yeah, man. With, with, you know, Arabian wine, coffee. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and uh, you know, even John Piper, who is not much of a beverage guy, Mm. has has written in praise of coffee. So coffee is is a fascinating beverage and really a marvelous creation that God has made. I'm fascinated by by the process yeah. from from bean, mm. you know, or cherry, whatever you call it, yeah. all the way to cup. Now right. listen, I want to tell our listeners Peter Silseth is the guy when we talk <clears throat> about coffee. It's a good day to be alive for coffee. I don't think the 80s was too good for coffee. No. I don't think the 90s was too good. But what I no. do know is that today, and today. Uh, living living in Minneapolis, it's one of the great blessings to be here. The this the mm. coffee industry is yeah. uh, is 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 you know is it here, and yep. and Peter, 
I always, you know, when I get snotty about my coffee, I always say, you know, I won't drink it if it's not made by hipsters. Because, you know, the hipsters. They know what they're doing. If the guy's skinny jeans, you know, don't look like spandex, then I don't want to drink it. I'm not saying I want to be his friend. I'm not saying that I want to. But I'm. But the coffee has to be that. And what I want our listeners to understand is that you have broken the mold. Uh, I don't have skinny jeans. Here's a, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have broken the mold. Because when I tell you guys that this man, Peter Silseth, knows coffee, I'm telling you, he knows coffee. So, brother, tell us a little bit about coffee and how coffee is has been an unexpected gift from God to open yeah. up venues for ministry yeah. and for the gospel. Well, I have to say, yeah, I don't have the skinny jeans. I don't have any dreads, as you can that's, see. That's what I'm saying, man. I do have thing. a tattoo, though, and that is important. <laughs> it's, it, I can't show it to you. I have long sleeves on, but it's up here on my shoulder. I didn't know you had any ink, man. Yeah, man. You want to know? You want to know what it says? Sure. I, and I use this. I use this as in connecting with people for yeah. potential gospel outreach. It works with short sleeve shirts. I'll say, "Do you want to see it?" Oh yeah, sure. I'll pull it up, and there's nothing there. And they look, and I say, "Well, it's invisible." Uh, okay. And I said, "Do you want to know what it says?" Yes. I says, "He is mine." I go, "Okay." I said, Jesus gave that to me when I became his child. Hmm. And so I do have ink, but it's, like I said, invisible. Invisible ink. That, but, but with it, coffee, the coffee's not metaphorical, though. No, that is the solid. The coffee is rock solid. But, you know, here's the thing. That's what I'm saying, Peter. They look at you. They don't think that guy knows coffee. And I'm telling them that's the guy. <laughs> Well, and, and you know what's so funny is five years ago, Luke, five years ago, I hated coffee. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying, man. Because as I told you, I'd only tried, it was either Fold, Folgers or Maxwell House. And I thought all coffee tasted like that. So what's the point? Mm-hmm. Okay. Five years ago, I was at a missionary's house in Honduras for a week and he pestered me for a week. You got to try this coffee. You got to try this coffee. And I said, I hate it. <laughs> Finally, to shut the man up, I said, I'll try. Okay, give me some. Wow, I had no idea. And so one thing led to another. Luke, I I bought a popcorn popper, and I got a little bag of green beans, and I roasted those puppies in a popcorn popper, and I was hooked at that mm. point. And then I found a, a small coffee roaster on Craigslist, 30 bucks. I thought, <laughs> That's a that's a fair gamble. Let me get it. Roasted some nice stuff. And, you know, it was, it was about two years ago now. We had all the kids over to the house and I was serving coffee to our daughter, you know, our daughters, my son-in-law and all that. Telling them, well, this, you know, it's this bean type and it's from this growing region, and, you know, laying it all out for them. And our older daughter just looked at me across the table. She said, Dad, this is great coffee but we don't know who you are anymore. (laughs) Now, I'm going to pause that for just a moment, because as you well know, uh, the mission I work with, um, Missio Serve Alliance, was given a coffee farm somewhere about five years ago or so, six years ago, 150-acre coffee farm in the Santa Barbara region of Honduras, which is high elevation, shade-grown volcanic soil. Mm. Those are three big deals in the coffee world. And it's been dormant for about 20 years, so we're working to get it going again. There's, uh, I'd love to take you there because you would just love, love the whole that. place. Mm. There's this cute little community up there, and a lot of those people used to work on the farm. So we want to get that going so that we can start employing uh, local people. Mm-hmm. Okay? Give them a better job opportunity. We are in the process of building a conference center, training center on the grounds. And this will be for two things. The the main goal of the farm is to become self-sustaining. And so the proceeds can be used with the church's 
that we are working with in Honduras so that they have the funding tool to train and send out their own missionaries. Okay. So it's not something where those churches are constantly looking to their brethren in the United States saying, yeah. fund us, fund us. No, no, here's a vehicle. Mm. But we're also working with the small coffee growers there. Because I, I, I know a lot of small growers in Honduras, Luke, and they they take it in the neck. I mean, it, it's hard for them to get ahead. And so we want to do some training for organic farming, rainforest preservation, uh, help them improve their crop. Okay. And then as we develop our pipeline to the States, the idea would be develop a co-op there and we can get those guys folded into that and help them get a better price. Yeah. Okay. Now my, back to my daughter, she said, dad, you should start a coffee shop so that you can tell the story of the Blossom Creek coffee farm. And daughter number two, oh yeah, that'd be great. And you know, and I'd have a place to sell my essential oils. And, and you know, they're just throwing ideas all over the room. And and I I, I was just recoiling. Because mm -hmm. first of all, nobody was plunking down any money. You know? <laughs> I noticed that quickly, but you know, my first reaction was no. But it's like the Holy Spirit said, Peter, just pray. I want you to seek my face on this. And I did. My wife and I prayed over this. I took a class on starting a coffee shop, and they basically scared me out of it. You know, they said Minneapolis is one of the toughest coffee markets in the country for third wave high end coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for basically for a year, I prayed, God, what are you doing? I want to be in the middle of it. That was it. Prayed that with a couple of men from our church. And um, one of them came to me one day, says, hey, where does, where does everything stand with you? I've been praying. I said, well, I'm, I'm going to roast up a few beans that I have from Honduras. And um, my daughter's got a plant sale going on. And I'm going to sell the beans there. We'll see what happens. Hmm. And then we'll just send the proceeds down to the farm. He said, well, my wife and I have been praying. And we want to buy you a coffee roaster. Apparently, I had told him about some models that I'd had my eye on, including a pipe dream model. So he offered to buy me a $1,600 coffee roaster, which I later found on Facebook Marketplace for $800. You know, after the guy heard my story, he's like, give me 800 bucks. It's yours. Mm -hmm. So we started selling December of 2019. It's Just been recently. Yeah. Not that long ago, yeah. No. Seems long ago. Not that long ago. Well, at times. And I had been in Honduras filming a coffee harvest, which, by the way, Recently. coffee har Yeah, last December. Mm -hmm. Coffee harvest is um, really in informative because it's backbreaking labor. Mm. You know, you think of a coffee farm, and we here in the Midwest think of flat, right? And tractors and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Most coffee farms are a rainforest on a hillside. And so you're climbing up and down. All those beans do not ripen at the same time. So over two months, you're going back to plants, all the plants and picking the ripe beans and hauling these hundred pound bags of beans around. And I looked at that and I thought, praise God for coffee farmers, you know, mm. praise God. I'm not one. <laughs> yeah. So, for real. so, um, we've just been, kind of proof of concept this year. Uh, we have a, a, a little, we, did, we probably didn't set it up the right way. Next thing, you know, before I, too long, my daughter had set me up on Etsy with a, a storefront. She said, there you go. And it's like, hey, I'm not ready. You know, so I got two types of beans from two farmers that I know down there. And as you know, those are gourmet beans. They cup at 87 each and they're I, I talk about that. You got to talk okay, what Peter, what difference does it make, man? Why can't I just go to Mickey D's and get a cup of coffee? What what is the difference does a bean make? What is that number you said? What does all that okay. mean? Yeah. Um and and here's the thing. Coffee is such a deep topic. So many layers involved in it from the country it's grown in, mm -hmm. the elevation 
the climate, what's, what other plants are growing around it, the bean type. You know, there's not just one type of bean. There, there are three main branches in the coffee tree, and Arabica, we know that name. You know, we, we hear it at gas stations, we have Arabica coffee. Doesn't mean a lot, okay? But inside that Arabica branch are close to 100 bean types. And similar and yet different. So, um, for example, those two beans I brought back, one was called Katawa'i, the other was Pakas. Okay. Farmers, importers, and roasters will do something called cupping. And they get these, these small cups. They'll set them out on the table, and they have different bean types. And a lot of times they'll get two or three cups per They're roasted. bean type. These, these beans are roasted? Yes. Yeah. And they do what's called a profile roast. So it's not the most flattering roast for the bean, but it's gives it gives you a general idea of what the bean has. Because different beans have are better roasted at different levels, you're saying. Okay. You yep. nailed it. And they get they have a special spoon and they'll go around, they dip it in hot water, and you come into the cup and you you have to slurp it because it spreads it over your tongue. Mm. So all the taste areas get engaged. And they grade it on acidity, sweetness, bitterness, uh, the different flavor profiles, different things like that. So anything from 80 to 85 is, is good coffee. Okay, nothing wrong with that. But when you get 85 to 90, oh, now you're talking gourmet level coffee. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Now, above 90, ooh, baby, you better bring your wallet on that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, because that is really fantastic coffee, but you're going so to pay rare, to, you're gonna rarer pay for to find that rarer, uh, more costly. Um, you know, there's a coffee farm in Panama that's producing what most people consider to be the best Gesha coffee bean in the world. I've seen Gesha coffee as high as $70 a pound. Seriously. Wow. I wouldn't dare buy it because I don't know if I'd brew it well enough, you know? Mm. So um, we, we sell several different types of coffee. It's all single origin, and it is ethically sourced. It is all gourmet level coffee. Mm -hmm. We roast is, I've, I've had it. Yeah, I know you have. No, I don't have the palate that you do, Peter. I, I can't distinguish flavors, but I can tell if something's really good or not. And okay. that coffee is good. It's full <laughs> of flavor. Yes, it's it is full of flavor. It's yeah. it's almost like a different drink to what you mm. normally, you know, even your Starbucks or whatever. It's just totally different. Yeah. Well, see, one of the things we've tried to capitalize on is freshness. Okay. So I do not roast coffee until I get an order, and then I roast that and try to get that shipped out the next day. Okay. So that. And we use usually priority second day mail, which, as we all know, is kind of slowing down right now. Yeah. But uh, get that to people as fresh as possible. We even have a special program for people that are local and can do local pickup. We've got a special program for that, too. So, you know, the whole thing that we're trying to do is the proceeds from our sales go to help the Blossom Creek Project in Honduras. And the name of your company, then, is? Blossom Creek Coffee Roaster. Blossom Creek Coffee Roaster. I don't know if you guys yeah. are hearing this, but what Peter's saying is you can get his coffee. Micro, I, people throw out the term micro roasted. This yeah. sounds like true micro roasted, custom roasted. Right. By the order. Yeah. Carefully roasted. And is... uh, I've had this coffee, man. Delicious. Uh, Peter, you have the gifting of the ability to, you know, you have the palate to understand and appreciate these things for yourself. You know, you have the interest. And another thing that you have is just the craftsmanship and the love of coffee. And that seems like such an important part of excellence in, in whatever yeah. we do, man. Right. It, it, a really a deep, I would call it a passion, passion. You know, mm -hmm. there's a passion in, in, in the things that we enjoy and, and, and those productions, 
of humanity that are really, really exquisite, they always have that ingredient, is the mm. passion and the love of, of, of the one who's making those things. And yeah. you have that. And that, that, that's such an encouragement because that's a model of Christian excellence in all of life. Well, Doing things you know, I, well. Yeah, you're you right. Know? And, uh, un, you know, uh, in, unfortunately, man, in some of the circles that we run in, there can be this minimalism, this kind mm. of, maybe call it streamlined gospel minimalism, where the only thing we're concerned about is the conversion of souls. Now, that is what we're ultimately concerned about. Of course. By far. Of course. But the pathway to those converted souls involves really all of our lives. Yeah. And they're, they're, you know, the, the fact that you can serve as a front lines minister of the gospel on the mission field, front lines, down and dirty, just ministering the gospel and living with the people, and putting the emphasis, because I know that you do, you put the emphasis on the gospel preached. Mm -hmm. yeah. But also at the same time, to have the balance and ability to swing into something like this, where you you continue to serve the gospel and I'm yeah. sure continue to minister the gospel just with yeah. the relationships that open up through coffee, but also yeah. through the excellence of the product to honor God in such a way that benefits the mission and, and simply brings glory to him by virtue of being excellent, you know, by virtue well, yeah. of unlocking that potential of the coffee bean, man. And I well, want you to know I really respect you for that, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that. But And I appreciate the way you laid that out, Luke, because this is how I feel. Okay, I've always wanted to do my best, whether it's radio broadcasting, video, coffee. One, my name is on that. Mm -hmm. Number two, my father's name is on that. And that's mm -hmm. way more important than my name being on it. You know, Um you know, coffee is a real relational thing, you know, brings people together. I, I want to tell you a quick story about a neighbor of mine. And uh, when we moved into our area, uh, northwest Minneapolis metro, you know, suburb area, uh, there were, it was hard to get to know people. I mean, we lived in Honduras where we'd step out of our house and within a couple of minutes, we'd already seen five friends. Mm -hmm. Hey, how's it going? Hey, 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 you know. You could, if you walked anywhere, it took you forever because you know, we had so many friends there. You know, I had to stop and talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just started praying, Lord, give us, you know, connect us up. Neighbor of mine, first summer we were here, had a garage sale. I went in and bought something, and he, you know, I always seen him, and he was an angry look on his face. So I tried to break the ice. I saw he had golf clubs in his garage. I said, oh, you're a golfer. Yeah. I said, oh, me too. Hmm. Okay. I took my stuff that I bought and I went home. But as he started driving by my house in the following months, he'd wave. Then he'd stop and talk. And one day he says, you know, I see you here all the time. Are you retired? I said, no, I work from home. Oh, what do you do? Ha, you asked me. I'm a missionary. <laughs> now, that's a great way to sneak up on people because right away they think humanitarian. They do. You know, this, uh -huh. this guy goes and builds houses, digs wells, and stuff like that. Yeah. But I started laying out for him what I do and um, that I, you know, I bring back coffee from Honduras. Really? I love coffee. So we started having coffee, and I would just inject Jesus into the conversation to see how he'd handle it. And, you know, I grew up kind of with, you want to share the gospel and give the ask and try to get them to pray all in one sitting. Okay. That, that was the model I grew up yeah. with. Mm -hmm. And the Holy spirit taught me through my neighbor, I'll call him Dan, uh, that it doesn't always work like that. Dan would listen to, we'd talk about Jesus for a while and then he changed the subject. Sure. He had taken in all he could handle at that point. But he told me later, he said, you always give me things to think about. Well, one thing led to a next, and one day he was very frustrated. We sat here having coffee, and he laid out a bunch of stuff going on in his life. And he said, you know, I am ready 
to put my faith completely in Jesus. Mm. And I was ready to say, okay, let's pray. And the Holy Spirit said, hold, please. And I didn't have the freedom to do that. But he said, I, I want to sit down and study the Bible with you once a week. I said, okay. I went and got the book that we use in Honduras for discipleship because it starts with the gospel. And then it just talks about living the gospel, mm. right? So I gave it to him and he said, yep, this, I want this. So we started going through it for a few weeks. And one day he said, hey, Peter, how do I know if I'm growing in Jesus? And the Holy Spirit said, now you can ask him. And so we started talking about it, and he gave me a point when he was going through AA where he threw himself on the floor and said, God, here I am, take me. And the Holy Spirit said, accept that for what, it, for what he gave it as. Said, okay. Luke, I got to tell you, I have seen such a change in that man's life as the peace of God infuses him. His family... His grandsons, Grandpa, you're you're at peace. What's going on? Mm. February before the COVID lockdown, I was privileged to baptize him, wow. and it's it's been such a joy. And and coffee brought us together. You know, praise so, the Lord. That's there you go. so great to hear, man. And uh, so with with the coffee, man, uh, I still have a few more questions. Oh, okay, bring it. Here's the deal. Because I think our listeners are catching on. You can get Peter's Coffee, Blossom Creek Coffee. Right. Where can they obtain that? Well, we have a storefront uh, at Etsy.com, and so you can go in there and do a search. Right now, they can go in there. Yeah, yeah. just uh, go Etsy.com, and there's a search bar up at the top. Type in Blossom Creek Coffee Roaster. And voila, Boom. you will see the coffees we have. There's uh, down the page, there's a video that will show you the coffee farm and kind of explain the Blossom Creek project down there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's really dope because it's it's another way that, you know, Christians want to be smart about the way that we use our money. I mean, oh, the yeah. Lord talks about money a lot and we yeah. use our money well. And, and using our money well can be done in so many creative ways, like spending wisely and, you know, even on the broad level, spending consciously. You mentioned that these things are ethically sourced. Yeah. That's that's honestly a very important thing for Christians to consider. You know, mm -hmm. this was one of the ways Christians fought against slavery was they were conscious in the way they used their money and if they weren't going to buy sugar or whatever – you know, the, their dollars spoke for them, and dollars can speak for justice. That's just one level. You can yeah. use your money well. Uh, yeah. But the other thing is, money can be used for the gospel, and you get coffee. That's, that's <laughs> that doesn't. It's like the god. It's like it's just like the gospel, man. It's like we. Win. That's win win, baby. We, we we get we get coffee, and the gospel goes forth. That's yeah. such a cool way, an entrepreneurial way to serve the ministry while getting something that is an exquisite product. Yeah. And I also, th this is what our listeners need to understand. You can get some of Blossom Creek coffee if you're lucky when you place an order from wrathandgrace.com because we have begun including some lucky samples yeah. of Peter's roastings right. for, for those who buy Wrath and Grace products yeah. and this would be a one cup size sample yeah. and and it will give you a real taste of things and i don't know if i were you and and i was placing an order on wrathandgrace.com i would probably leave a note or contact mm -hmm. jay and let him know that hey i'd like one of those samples if you got one of those because i'd like to try yeah. out peter's coffee and you know here's the thing you um I, I've gotten a little bogged down with some of my, you know, some video work, which is kind of my main thing. I've got to get get some more samples roasted up and get them down to your We'll man. get them going because our listeners, you guys are going to feel this coffee. Look, you know Luke Walker has a savor for the finer things in life. <laughs> I believe it's a matter of glorifying God to yeah. consume excellence, whether yeah. it's media, 
whether it's food or drink, mm. to consume excellence. And like there's that. a, con, you know, it, 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 we, it's like contemplating over that cup of coffee and drinking mm -hmm. it to God's glory and knowing that serving a good cause. I would encourage all our listeners to check it out. Place an order with Wrath and Grace. Ask for a sample or just go right to Etsy and make yep. an order and try this stuff out. Maybe your church could use some of this coffee. And uh, that's that. That will be a very creative way. Of sir, and that's another thing. Look, churches aren't the only place where I've had coffee as bad as I've had it at churches is when I substitute taught in public schools, and in the teachers' lounge. And when I drank the coffee, Peter, I thought there's it's no it's no longer a mystery to me the state of public schools because the teachers are drinking. I thought it was orc blood. Orc blood. It was. It was. Wow. Some yeah. different sort of. It was like a an evil sacrament. I felt, and yeah. churches are kind of notorious <laughs> for that too. Because right. Because what matters is preaching the gospel. So the coffee, as long as it's got caffeine in it, it can be okay. This is well, an opportunity yeah. for churches to serve excellence in a way that glorifies God and serves the mission field. Mm -hmm. I'm just spinning on this, man. There's you so are. many ways that this can be used. Yeah. Well, and you know, here's the thing. Um, you know, you look at you look at coffee. You can go into the grocery store and buy a low end coffee, and you pay X amount per pound. Okay. Now, if you want to buy excellent coffee, it is more expensive. But let's let's look at it this way. Let's say you drive off to work and you're, you always do a pull into a drive in somewhere, pick your place, whether it's a gas station or a fast food chain or a coffee chain, and you're going to get a drink of coffee and hit the road. And it costs you, depending on what it is, X amount. How many times do you do that in a month? Mm -hmm. Figure that out and then look back and say, okay, Blossom Creek coffee, yes, it costs more than xyz over in the store but it's not been sitting on the shelf for several weeks or longer uh i spend this much on coffee well that more than pays for a bag of blossom creek coffee i, I would bet if you look at your coffee consumption you could say hey this works you're shaving off dollars actually to give to gospel ministry which is perfect okay and Yo, this is what we need, Peter. This is such a, a cool example because what I love about it is you didn't do this. No, this, this no, was not no, your not plan. Me. Definitely not it's your God. plan. God I did has, not see this coming. Yo, God has He's got plans up his sleeve at all times. And we this may this be a lesson to all of us. We can trust mm. God with our lives. Absolutely. We can trust the direction He's 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 moving yeah. us in because He might have something unspeakably cool for us to do for His glory. <laughs> And, you know, if I had fought God and said, no, I'm going to stay in Honduras, okay, I'd still be involved in ministry there. I'd have this health issue yet, but I'd be limping along more than likely. And yet he has brought me into something where he said, I've prepared you for this. Mm -hmm. do, do you know what a staggering thought that is? That God says, I've had this in mind, and I've just been getting you ready for it and putting things into your life where I can launch you. Mm -hmm. Man. And, and Luke, I am a cracked pot. Mm. I'm no great thing. But then God gets the glory, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. <laughs> Yo, okay. As we, as, we, as we exit out here, Peter, mm. I'd like you to really just wrap a little bit about coffee and the different flavor notes and you, the flavor profiles that you enjoy best and mm. just some of those glories that God has put in the coffee bean that you love. Just tell us, just talk about it and stir our affections for, for God's wonder through his creation of the coffee bean. You want me to wrap that out? Oh, <laughs> I was thinking just... I, oh, I, I was thinking just... You know, talk about it. That's what I was thinking. About. I was impressed that I, I, you thought this guy I, here could actually rap. But if you have, I won't hold that beatbox against you. But 
<laughs> Maybe you take me by surprise again and break the mold of not just yeah, coffee right. roasters, but of rappers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wouldn't that be something? Uh, just let's drop not some hold gems on us, man. Let's not hold our breath on that one. <laughs> um, you know, I, I really enjoy a single origin coffee. In other words, this bean came from this farm. It's purity. Okay. Yeah. Um, and like I said, we have two. Well, one I'm out of right now. In two weeks, we'll be getting it. It's called Special Select. And the other is, is um, Black Label. I know those two farmers. And to me, that that's the coolest thing is about connecting the people who actually made that. Mm. But, you know, for me, Luke, a light roast coffee is what brings out the best flavor profile in the in the coffee, usually. Now, certain beans need to be roasted to this level or that level. But light roast, to me, brings – there's so many nuances in the coffee. And what's cool is, you know, some people – they got to have their coffee piping hot. And if it's not hot enough, they go hit it, throw it in the microwave. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Get an exquisite coffee and then pay attention to what that coffee is telling you on your tongue. Okay. And so let it cool just a bit after you've brewed it. And then go ahead, you know, with nobody in the room, slurp that puppy. Okay. <laughs> and let that play across your tongue. And just think about what am I experiencing here? The other beautiful thing is as the coffee cools, some of those original flavors will fade a bit and different flavors will start to come out. Um, Ethiopian coffees are one that really cool well. In other words, their flavor profile always stays in interesting and exquisite, mm. but it changes as it cools a bit. And so I love a good Ethiopian. That's why we have uh, Estate Premium in our lineup, because it's an Ethiopian bean. Yeah, it's not from Honduras, but I'm a sucker <laughs> for Ethiopian coffee. <laughs> I can dig it, bro. And, you know, we have, we have a couple of mediums, a couple of lights. We have a dark roast. We have a cold brew. You have I know we're getting cold cooler brew. weather now, but that will also... It's a dark roast, so it'll go so hot. So by cold brew, you mean the beans are fitted in such a way to make the best cold brew? That was the idea when we, you know, I took the bean and I played wow. with the roast for a while, tried different roasting techniques, you know, adding heat here, taking fan out there, less heat, more fan, until we got this. And I had, you know, several people who love cold brew. I said, all right, try these beans. And everyone this is powerful stuff. Wow. And, and cold brew, you know, it's, it's quite simple. You know, you can, you can just take a glass pitcher, coarse ground beans, throw them in there, stir it up, throw it in the fridge, cover it, throw it in the fridge for 24 hours, pull it out, strain that. What you talking about now? <laughs> well, you're talking about stuff. fire when you talk about that. Now, there's some people that pretend to be coffee purists who don't drink cold press because they have this certain idea of it. And they're obviously the type of people who think cold press and cold coffee or iced coffee is the same thing, which is no. not. Tell us a little bit about the unique glories of cold brew. Okay. One. And refute them. You know. Okay. Stand by to be refuted. <laughs> I will say this, for me, cold brew in the winter is hard to do because, you know, we live 15 years on a tropical island that changes your body. So cold coffee in the winter for me, I can't. You need a hot drink, you're saying. I do. Yeah. But boy, in the summer, first of all, it is refreshing. Okay. So I've got a special cold brew maker that I bought. It wasn't a whole lot. But it has a filter that hangs in there. And you put the coffee grounds in there and add the cold water. Um my, my wife loves it when she sees I put some in the fridge because I pour her first thing she said is chocolatey, mm. nutty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, that doesn't, doesn't mean mm. like you're drinking, you know, chocolate no, milk. Just That's not note. what it is. Exactly. It is a note, a flavor profile that comes out. And, you know, what I do is I'll make a big batch and then I'll go make coffee cubes. So that when I want to keep it cold longer, I put coffee cubes in my coffee, not ice, which will dilute it. 
Now that's that I am not that little tip. I'm not going to charge you for that today. That was free. Yeah. But but see, I've never heard of a cold brew bean before ever. So that's amazing. Well, can I can I let you, can I just be straight? You invented uh, it. I, no, <laughs> I wish. Because <laughs> baby, I would have had patents all over that mm-hmm. thing. Um, you can cold brew any bean you want. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've cold brewed um, our our special select light roast, the Ethiopian light roast, and some dark roast stuff. Um, it's what do you like? It will taste a little different and gloriously different when you cold brew it. So when you see a bean that says cold brew, to a certain extent, it is marketing. Okay, but. My cold brew bean, our cold brew bean, it is much better as a cold brew than a hot sure, brew. Sure, it performs well. That's awesome. Because we dialed it in for that. Yeah. That so. means that the Lord put it in that coffee bean and that he yeah. approves smilingly cold brew for those it, that are cool enough to handle it. That, now, that is a great slogan. See, we've been using the slogan, sip all you want, we'll roast more. <laughs> hey, <laughs> uh, you, you just triggered a, did you, do you remember the movie, um, chariots of fire? Would you believe I've never seen that movie? I have hip hop okay. songs with samples from that movie, Okay, but I've never seen the movie. Well, there's one point in there where Eric little is talking to his sister and he's training for the Olympics and she wants him to go back to be a missionary in China. He said, I will. But first I must do this. God has made me to run fast. And he said, when I run, I feel his smile upon me. Mm. Okay. Well, God has given me this. And I do feel his smile as, as I look. Mm. When I got those two beans from Honduras, I stood in front of the roaster and I said, Father, I don't know how to roast this. Okay. I want to do this well and excellently. And I quite, quite frankly, just prayed my way through that very first roast and sent it to people. All right, try this. Tell me what it tastes like. And from that first roast to our final, very little has changed. That tells me it's not Peter. It's God. He is behind all this. (laughs) That's amazing. This is God's coffee. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Folks, you've heard it here. Blossom Creek Coffee. I dare say the only thing that will improve your cup of Blossom Creek Coffee is when it is drinking and (laughs) slurped from your very own Wrath and Grace Radio Fellowship of the Cup mug, which is known to elevate all its contents. Oh, so it's synergistic. That's what it is. It's synergistic. Yeah, taking it to a whole new level. (laughs) That's right. All oh, right, yeah. y'all. <laughs> I want you guys to check out Peter's coffee, check out the roasts, place mm. an order at wrathandgrace.com, and maybe even put a little request in there to get a sampler. Yeah. Drink your coffee unto God's glory, and may Amen, all of us bro. follow God in our lives the way that Peter has described. Mm. So encouraged by you, brother, and encouraged to see what the Lord continues to do with your life. Well, I always enjoy the time you and I can spend together, and if coffee's involved so much, the better. Mm -hmm. But more than anything, as we talk, God is in the picture, and I always feel like it's iron sharpening iron, so thank you for this opportunity. Praise the Lord, brother. I appreciate it. All right, y'all. This has been a wonderful Wrath and Grace radio conversation. I've been your host, Luke Walker, and this is Peter Silseth with Blossom Creek Coffee. Catch you guys later.